Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how I deal with welded switch nodes, which is a statement that will make sense if you watch the rest of the video, so yeah, uh, here we go. So this right here is a reference GTX 980 Ti that was generously donated by a fan of the channel because uh, the vCore VRM failed, as is pretty typical for a reference GTX 980 Ti. Now then, um, you know, when you have a, v like a VRM failure, it's mainly just a matter of identifying which power stage failed and then replacing it, or like ideally, it would be just a matter of identifying which power stage failed, removing the dead power stage and replacing it, right? And when you remove that power stage, all of your pads are still on the board, and then you slap the new power stage on and the card works. But unfortunately, this card is kind of weird in that it actually had two power stage failures, not just one. Um, and the other power stage, yeah, that didn't really want to let go of the board. And the reason this happens is when power stages fail, they typically fail due to thermal runaway. Um, and when they thermally run away, they can get very, very hot. And honestly, this isn't even that bad. Like, yeah, this one got hot enough that it melted the copper switch node and welded itself to it. But you can also get cards where the power stage gets so hot that you can see which phase failed by looking at the back of the card because it burned through all of the layers of the PCB and bulged the back. Um, so yeah, this really isn't like the like this really isn't that bad because we don't have to like drill a hole through the board to remove short circuits. This just took uh, took the switch node with it. Now. Um, you know, like, this just took the switch node with it when I was pulling the, the power stage off of the board with, with hot air. Now, alternatively, uh, what I've heard some people do when they have a power stage that's welded itself to the board is that they'll actually dremel away the power stage um, and leave the, the pads behind. But this requires a lot of patience, precision, and a dremel. And while I think I probably have the patience to do it, I'm not so sure about the precision, and I don't have a Dremel. So I don't use the Dremel method, and I have heard from other people who have attempted that method that it's actually really easy to go too deep and end up, like, removing, you know, uh, like, removing the switch node anyway, because you just grind it away with the Dremel by accident. So, yeah, um, that would be, like, an alter like, that would be... A different method that you could try using is to, to just use a Dremel to Dremel away the, the dead power stage uh, if it's welded itself to the board. But what I did here was I just pulled on the power stage until it ripped the switch node off the board. Uh, which is fine, because I do have a fix for this. This is the third time I've done this. So, uh, yeah, um, I can deal with this. Um, so anyway, uh, we now basically just need to make a new switch node. So to make a new switch node, I use this stuff. This is 40 micron thick copper foil that I bought on eBay. I think it's advertised for like EMI shielding electric guitars or something, but the priority for me is that it's 40 microns thick and it comes as a big rectangle so you can cut arbitrary shapes out of it. The main reason I actually bought it as a big rectangle because you can also get copper foil tape. Um, but I wanted a big rectangle because I wanted to experiment with, like, adding extra power planes to boards and that kind of thing. Um, so I wanted the option to, like, be able to cut really big, uh, big shapes out of this stuff instead of just, like, having, you know, copper tape. Uh, the main concern with this stuff is the thickness. Um, as far as I know, the top layer of a GPU is typically uh, one ounce copper, which is about 35 microns thick. Uh, so this stuff being 40 microns thick is a little bit thicker, which is fine, at least as far as I can tell it's fine. Uh, it doesn't like cause any issues when soldering on the new power stage, that, that's sort of the main concern, right? Obviously if it was like really, really thick, uh, like I wouldn't try to use like a, a copper plate um, of any, like to replace a switch node, because your power stage would end up like hovering, a, a, you know, a fraction of a millimeter above the board, which would be not ideal. Um, and I also would avoid using any copper foil that's really, really thin. I'm, like, not sure that this necessarily exists, but if you found something that was, like, 5 microns thick, I'd be a bit concerned that it might negatively affect the current handling uh, capacity of the phase, because the switch node handles all of the current uh, flowing through the power stage. Yeah, that all ends up going through the switch node. So if the switch node isn't, uh, you know, similar in in it's like like physically similar to the like your new switch node isn't physically similar to the original one 
Uh, you might find that the power stage is now running significantly hotter because there's extra resistance from your replacement switch node. Um, so in theory, actually, like my 40 micron uh, foil might kind of act as a bit of an upgrade for for the like current handling capacity of the, the switch node of this phase, at least, you know, if I do a good job of cutting it, um, which I didn't, but we'll get to that. <laughs> anyway, um... So at this point you might be thinking, okay, so you have this copper foil, you just cut a new switch node out of it and you slap it onto the board, and uh, no. Because um, while that sounds like a good idea on paper, uh, cutting, if you've cut any really like complex shape out of this copper foil and then try to peel it off, it has a ten like it bends, it wrinkles, it stretches, it rips. Um, yeah, it's not very cooperative. So uh, my experience, it's best to like, cut like big rectangles out of it anything more complicated like anything significantly more complicated than a rectangle starts having like structural integrity issues when you go to pull it off of the backing material so here i cut out a, a small rectangle that's somewhat larger than the switch node that you know it's going to be replacing um and then i just pressed it into the board also i think i actually cut it down to size a bit more or maybe, no, I think I just moved it up a bit. Anyway. <clears throat> so yeah, and then I uh, pressed it into the board. To do that, I just used like a thermal paste spatula, because uh, the idea behind this is that, well, since this is thin and it's copper, so it's soft, uh, I want to be able to see what's under it, right? And by pressing it into the board like this, I can see all of these pins over here. Uh, I can actually see the, uh, like, you know, um, indent of where the switch node used to be. So it's like, okay, I'm going to be cutting right here, because... That's where the old switch node was. Also, I don't want to short out these pins because these are all like ground and that would be really bad. Uh, we can see where these uh, these old switch node pins went missing. So yeah, I think this is actually a pin that I don't want to connect to. So I'll probably be cutting like that. Uh, we don't need to cut this edge, which because that's already where it needs to be. Um, then this over here, I'm going to do like this. There used to be a thermistor over here, which I moved out of the way because it was getting in the way. So that, that'll get put back on. Uh, we can also see this via, right? That was that was connected to the switch node previously. That's uh, uh, this guy right here. Oops. As this guy right here. So that via, I do want to connect to that. So if we go back to our switch node, it's like, okay, so I'm probably going to cut away something like this, right? So that I can solder it from the top. Because theoretically, it might be possible to like get it to solder like through the copper foil. But the copper foil does have an adhesive on the back, and I'm not sure, like, I wouldn't try, like, I wouldn't want to blindly uh, test that. Though, I guess you could always just check if there's con continuity from the switch node to the back of the board. But yeah, at the, at the time I decided that, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to cut it so that I can solder it from the front and I can see if it's soldered or not. Um, and then, of course, we just want to connect it to the old uh pad like to the pad for the inductor so this is sort of like you know ideally the shape for this switch node would have been like something like that um and what i actually ended up with is this abomination because uh, <laughs> uh yeah i'm not that handy with the box cutter and tweezers and like here you can see a really like this is a really clean cut over here i don't really mind this this is also like you know good and then there's this area where it's like okay this worked out and then I evidently didn't cut it deep enough. Um, like when, yeah, with the, like I didn't like cut into it deep enough with the box cutter here. And so when I went to pull it off with the tweezers, it took a lot more material with it than I actually wanted. Uh, and for whatever reason at the time, I decided that actually uh, this is fine. And I'm just going to slap the power stage over the top of this anyway, even though it looks absolutely horrible. Um, it's not really... Like, again, the main concern with this is, like, if the cross-section of the switch node is too narrow, it is going to affect the operating temperature of the power stage. Like, it's potentially going to run a lot hotter. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of the main concern here. <coughs> I'm not really too worried about this, because if you actually look at what the pinout of the power stage here, it's like, okay, so I think, like, pin 35. Um, yeah, so pin 35 is probably not connected um, at this point, which... Not really the end of the world, but <clears throat> yeah, certainly uh, not ideal. So yeah, anyway, um, 
yeah, so this this is the horrible mess of a switch node that I ended up with. So my main complaint is like this. And to fix this, I would have had to start over, right? Like cut out a whole new rectangle of copper and then cut it again. And I, I like I just didn't feel like doing that um, when I was working on this. So I didn't do that. And uh, yeah, this is this is still on the card. And the card does run. We're, I'm, you're probably going to get to see the card running in some future video. I have some, like, I have a few ideas for what I want to do with this thing. Anyway, other than that, like, this corner being, you know, uh, more cut away than it really needs to be, that doesn't matter. I also don't care about this pin down here. This doesn't do anything, as far as I know. Um, I think, actually, this is more like a test point for manufacturing than an actual, like, functional pin for the, the power stage. This right here, I'm not worried about it because the current goes that way. It's not going that way, so, like, why would some piece of copper over here uh, really affect anything? Uh, this right here is mostly so that I don't accidentally short the thermistor to the switch node. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of that. Um, yeah, so it looks really horrible, but, uh... You know, once you put a power stage over it, you can't even really tell. Other than this big, ugly blob of solder over here. But I like to tell myself that that compensates for how narrow the switch node is. Right? Because it, like, th this gives the switch node extra current handling capacity. At least I like to tell myself that. And it might not even be wrong. But, yeah, it does look really, really ugly. Um, anyway. Uh... Yeah, so there is one, like, major downside to, like, soldering power stages onto, like, a switch node that's been replaced like this, um, which is that I haven't figured out a good way to, like, glue the switch node into place. Because, um, uh, yeah, you don't really want to be, like, unnecessarily extending it, right? Because um, that can cause, like, because the, the switch node, like, you have a very high volt, like, a very high voltage PWM signal on that. So... <clears throat> You don't really want it to be uh, massive, if possible, because it can start like radiating VRM switching noise into into the environment. Um, so yeah, I haven't really figured out a good way to to like hold it, this in place. And the copper foil, like it does come with an adhesive, but that adhesive doesn't hold up to soldering temperatures. So the main concern is like when you're soldering a new power stage on, if you put that power stage, like let's say you put it slightly off, like at an off angle, like this, right? Um, yeah, you can't just like slide it into position because it's going to start pulling on the switch node. And then, you know, like if this moves a fraction of a millimeter that way, these are ground pins. So you've just shorted your switch node to ground. And if it moves a fraction of a millimeter this way, that's a 12 volt pad you've just shorted 12 volts straight to the output, uh, which is even worse. Um, so that's the main concern with this, is that when you go to like solder the replacement power stage onto it, like you need to nail the placement because if you don't and you start like moving it around, it's very likely that you're going to end up like shorting the switch node out to something. And so that's sort of the, the main uh, sort of uh, difficulty with this. Um, because, yeah, if, you, if all the pads are still on the board, you can actually just sort of slide the power stage into alignment, you know, if you have to. It's not been an issue in my experience. But, uh, yeah, with this, that's really not an option. Like, the power stage has to, like, you have to place the power stage exactly where it goes straight from the beginning. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> and um, that's kind of it, really. You know? Um, wow. Well put the switch node on, and then you just need to, like, you know, obviously after you install the power stage, you check for short circuits. You can also see that I replaced the thermistor and the little capacitor that was getting in the way. Um, this is a input filtering capacitor, so arguably the card would actually still run without this, but best if that's still there. Um, but, uh, you know, like, th there's no reason to get rid of it, so <laughs> that's going back on. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, once this is in place, obviously you can check for short circuits, right? You can just measure from here to 12 volts to make sure that there's no short, like that the switch node didn't like slide under the power stage and, and short out onto the 12 volt pad. You can also measure from the switch node to ground. Now, when you're doing a measurement from switch node to ground, uh, you have to keep in mind that the, uh, like th this is why, like this connects, um, okay, if we go to the full card view, right? Like, the connection, it's this power stage, yeah. So the connection basically goes um, switch node, and then from there it goes to ground, right? Like, it goes to the core, and then from the core to ground. So 
if you take a measurement from, uh, like here to here, you're actually measuring the resistance of the GPU core, right? And for 980 Ti's, this isn't really a huge problem because a GTX 980 Ti core, when it's at room temperature, is around 3 ohms of resistance. But on a lot of modern cards, like say a GTX 980, uh, GTX 1080 Ti, um, uh, well, that's not really that modern, but it's a good example because that's like one of the lowest resistance GPU cores that I'm aware of. Uh, those have a core resistance of 0 0.08 ohms. So if you measure from the switch node to ground on like a GTX 1080 Ti, it'll actually look like a short circuit even when it's completely fine, unless you have like a uh, multimeter that can measure into like, you know, very low resistances. And ideally you'd actually want like a four point measurement, uh, like a four point resistance measurement. Um, so yeah, that's kind of annoying. But here you can actually just measure switch node to ground. Um, and yeah, if that, uh, you know, if that reads three ohms, then yeah, this isn't shorted to ground, so that's good. Um, and then it's just power up the card and check with the oscilloscope that the switching waveform on the switch node is the same as the switching waveform for all of the other switch nodes to make sure that the power stage is actually running correctly. Um, so... Yeah, and I've already done all of that. Um, I've not actually like run extended load on the card because in order to take the oscilloscope measurement, right, I need, need access to the VRM and I'm not going to run Fire Strike on a GTX 980 Ti reference VRM with no heatsink on it. But uh, uh, yeah, I've already run the GPU Z render test. All of the phases still run. So yeah, and this is the third time I've done this. I've also used this method on a GTX 980, uh, like some MSI gaming GTX 980 card. Uh, that was a dual NFET, so not a power stage, so a little bit simpler pinout, but ultimately same methodology that also ended up like the, the dual NFET ended up pulling the switch node off the board. So I ended up cutting out a really narrow strip of copper foil and, and using that as a re replacement switch node. Uh, also had the same concern of like, yeah, you, when you place the MOSFET, you can't, you know, nudge it into position because it'll move the switch node and it'll short out on something. So... Um, yeah, that, that was, uh, that, and then I had a, another GTX 980 Ti, which actually had this exact same problem, but I think it was a different power stage, uh, where the switch node got ripped off, and I used this method on that card as well, so, um, yeah, and that card still works, that card actually, I've benched it with no, no power limit, and it's, it's appeared in a couple of videos, but, yeah, Anyway, so this is this is how I deal with, uh, switch nodes that have welded themselves to power stages or MOSFETs, and, you know, just use copper foil, stick it to the board, cut, you know, and then cut it to to shape, and then just be very careful when placing the power stage. So not really, not really that, uh, uh, that, like, not really that annoying to deal with um, at, at this point. Like, it used to be when, you know, like, when I first encountered the whole, like, oh, the switch node came came off the board with the power power stage, uh, that used to be a major problem, and now it's like, nah, you just slap a new switch node on it, no big deal. Um, uh, yeah, so, though, honestly, the, the job of a replacement switch node I've done here is, is awful. Like, th this thing is an absolute abomination, and, uh, yeah, honestly, I wish I had, had done a better job of cutting it out, because it does look very ugly, but, um... Well, you can't see it once the power stage is in place, so, you know, and it does run, so, anyway, hopefully it doesn't, like, hopefully, like, worst case scenario, this power stage fails again, and I end up having to cut a proper switch node the next time, like, a better one, <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, that's it for the video, so hopefully you found this, uh, interesting, if not particularly useful, and uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store uh, where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it for the video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.